Jay means is a week away. What are the important mistakes to avoid? How do you overcome stress? And what are the important chapters to focus on? And how do you plan the last one week so that you get at least 50 to 60 marks more in the GE means exam? That's what we'll be talking about in this video. So let's just get started. I have a very exciting announcement for all of you guys. We are forming a community for people who are giving GE and Bitsa 2024. And in this community, I'll be helping you guys connect with several people who have graduated from top colleges across the country like IIT, BITS and NIT. And using this community, you can ask them questions regarding different colleges and preparation strategies. And you'll be able to talk with several people who are of your own age and try to understand how you can ace this exam together. You can post your doubts over there, there will be mentors to help you out. And this is how we'll be able to move forward in this YouTube channel. Keep getting messages like, Baya, I've not studied 11th standard. I have topics in 12th standard that I'm not sure about. Chapters like rotation and integration still confuse me. What about chapters like kinematics and loss of motion? Are they even important? So how do you go about planning in the last one week? First step is that do not take up new chapters, especially at this point of time. If you've not taken up, if you've not studied something new, if you've not studied any chapter, if suppose let's say a week in a specific chapter, then make sure to skip that chapter in the last one week. Do not think that, okay, I have one more week left, I have some time left, maybe let me pick up a new chapter and study. I remember during my time that I was very, very skeptical about this chapter called Simple Harmonic Motion. I, my concepts were weak, I was not sure about how to solve the questions, so I ended up spending an extra week just preparing that one chapter. And even let's say a chapter of sim like that, it, there's a maximum probability that you'll get close to 8 marks in that topic. So it doesn't make sense for you to spend an entire week perfecting a topic if you've not studied that topic before. So make sure to understand that there are over 50 chapters in physics, chemistry and maths and it's absolutely alright if you are not confident in a specific subject or specific chapter. So the only thing that you should focus on doing now is to solve previous year papers, solve mock tests and analyze the papers. One thing that most people fail to do is that they fail to analyze the papers. If you don't analyze the papers, how will you improve and how will you learn? You might think that instead of analyzing the papers, let me just solve another paper in that time so that I'll get more experience. But don't think like that. It's important for you to understand that analysis of papers is where you actually get an increment in the marks. And if you don't analyze papers, you'll just keep making the same mistakes over and over again. And you'll end up thinking, oh, why my, mar why my marks are not improving? How do I even get ahead? So keep in mind that analyze papers, make sure to spend at least one and a half hours in just analyzing the papers after you've written the exam. The second most important topic is to make short notes. What is short notes? A short notes can be as simple as writing the reactants and products in something like organic chemistry. Suppose it's a, you studied a reaction like aldol condensation or Canizaro reaction. Just try to write the reactants, the reagents and the products so that in case you get a straightforward question, you don't miss out on that. So you just write the basics, let's say in the chapter like coordination compounds, try to make sure to note down what the weak field ligands, what the strong field ligands. And there might be different cases where the number of lone pairs might be different. And because of that, spin magnetic moment might be different for each compound. So make sure to note down these cases separately. And especially in chapters like chemical bonding or coordination compounds, there are more logical questions which can be asked from an inorganic perspective. There might be questions where it might seem like an exception to you or it might seem like something that you've already learned before. But there might be a little addition, there might be something new that they've added into it. Suppose instead of speaking in terms of moles, they might speak in, from, in terms of grams. So there can be different additions and different... And let's take an example for organic chemistry. In organic chemistry, there are different different reactions that you'll have to remember. You might think that it's very easy to study organic chemistry and at the same time, you'll easily forget it as well. But the point is, if you remember the mechanism of a reaction, you will not forget the reaction. Even now, I remember how the products of Canizaro and how the products of aldol condensation are formed. Because I understand how the mechanism happens, how the lone pair hits and how the, the products are formed from the reagents. So try to understand the mechanism of it so that you don't forget it. And make sure to write down all the reactions and products and write down 
all these kind of things in a small notebook so that you can revise it easily because these kind of questions will keep coming year after year so make sure to note it down and make sure to revise these kind of reactions over and over again reactions like iodoform form reaction gettelman coach reaction eta, eta reaction aldol condensation any sort of reaction which are named reactions make sure to write it down and make sure to learn from it the third part is going to be a very very fun part where we are going to take up some of the questions and we are going to decode them because we will understand the fact that questions which look tough are generally the easiest ones to solve let's take an example of this question right here it's a simple question which involves arithmetic progression but you might think that it's very complicated because it involves limits and it involves a lot of rationalizing and it doesn't even look like a simple arithmetic progression problem right but then once you realize is that once you rationalize a numerator and numerator everything ultimately ends up cancelling out and you will get a very very straightforward answer so the qu thing is that if a question which seems complicated it seems that it has more data points involved you might think that there's a lot of the question looks really big but the thing is that there might be a lot of information they're giving you so that you can solve the problem in the best possible manner let us take another example which involves 3d geometry in vectors so one of the best parts about 3d geometry in vectors is that there's a lot of questions which generally come from this chapter and it's very very easy to solve these questions it is it has basic stuff which involves cross product and dot product and at the same time you'll be able to get a lot of marks at least 16 to 20 marks which comes from 3d geometry and vectors so make sure to not skip out on this chapter because it is one of those chapters where you can get a lot of marks this example for a minute you'll understand that in this example you can just use the simple formula of p1 plus lambda p2 and then if you just find the dot product of the plane and the line and if you, in, you equate it to zero you will get the answer because the other so if you find the dot product between them you will find that the answer is zero and this is how you solve simple questions in vectors in 3d geometry because there's not much to do because you just have to find the cross product or dot product to get the final answer so make sure to capitalize on chapters like this is very very important because that sorts of sets the tone for the remaining two hours of the paper if you've solved only 10 questions in the first one hour you will be very very underconfident in the remaining two hours whereas if you solve at least 30 35 questions in the first one hour then you'll be very very confident in the next two hours you can take time to solve the tough questions you can even if you don't solve the extremely tough questions you have scored enough marks to get a very very good college and a very very good branch so make sure that is your target make sure to target as many questions as possible and in chapters like this you can get a lot of marks for free very easily this is my favorite subject out of all three and in physics you'll find the very easy questions where you can easily substitute the formula and get the answer and in case that you are not able to substitute formula and get the answer they might expect the answer in a form of a graph let's let's take this question for example this question is very very easy because it's just if you just simply know the formula for this question you will be able to get the answer directly there's not too much thinking involved it's not too difficult to solve it's just the fact that you need to know the formula and in terms of solving questions in physics have a very very good understanding of concepts from first principles and don't just simply go about applying formulas directly understand the question first is it pure rolling can you conserve angular momentum can you conserve linear momentum and is the total energy conserved is there any air resistance involved and in case of a projectile is it inclined or is it in the straight line so how do you even go about solving this problem and have asking these type of questions will enable you to save a lot of marks because there's a lot of silly mistakes which happen you might think that this is a pure rolling case but it's actually not a pure rolling case so you'll have to understand how you can combine different concepts to solve certain tough questions you guys are probably under a lot of stress but trust me guys if in the first attempt doesn't go well there's always a second attempt you can always going to do well you guys are going to ace this exam be able to move forward in this youtube channel so if you like the content that i'm putting out make sure to consider subscribing as well because there's a lot of amazing content coming out just like this there's a lot of examples there's a lot of things which will help you 
is Bitsat 2024 and GE 2024. So make sure to consider liking the video, subscribing and I'll see you guys.